you know, my, my interest has been in teaching an understanding of awakening and self-realization for the last 12 years. Um, and I'm sure some people would think this focus on constellation work is not, um, is, is, a, is a tangent or, or is in some way um, off track. But what I've seen and experienced is that it's a very useful tool to help people experience um, what you might call uh, uh, emptiness or non-dual awareness or uh, a direct living from what I call no mind. And, and these are terms that you don't have to use, but they just came to me from my Zen training. And for a long time, I never understood what they meant. Um, but what no mind means is the ability to access another way of knowing. And this other way of knowing is continuously available, but we don't see it because we're so caught up in our own thinking and our own mind. So, um, one thing that I learned to do right off the bat after this shift in awareness happened to me 13 years ago is to help people learn to develop the ability to watch their mind and observe it with some curiosity and detachment. So this is a kind of perspective that you learn in meditation, but it, uh, it can be done anywhere, anytime, to instead of identifying with your thoughts and feelings and experiences, to step back and watch that happen. Watch your mind do its thing. Um, so learning that perspective is very, very useful to people. It's not awakening and it's not living from emptiness or from the no mind, but it is way better than being totally caught up in your programming conditioning. So it's a huge step in the right direction. Um, but that's not the end of it. You know, so learning to observe and be in what's called the witness or the watcher or the, you know, noticing your, your experience and not totally being identified with it, that's a step and a big step. And it's something that anyone can learn to do. But this learning to be one with um, the ground of your, own, of your being and the ground of being itself, that, that's a different thing altogether. Um, that's what I call the no mind, this other way of knowing that is continuously being shown. And then if you say, well, why don't we see it? To me, the answer is because we're totally consumed by our own thinking, our own beliefs, our own assumptions, our own comparing what is with what we think should be but isn't. Um, and all of that comparing creates a sense of separation. And the sense of separation creates a self-identity. And the self-identity then needs to be protected and needs to be advocated for. And then you're off and running. Right? Most of you have heard me talk about this probably ad nauseum, but I, it's just important to, to, to recapitulate why, why constellation work, I think, is very helpful in, in understanding awakening and, and the experience of living from no mind. Because when you are participating in a constellation, um, you are asked to represent someone's family member that you probably know almost nothing, if not literally nothing, about. So in constellation work, if some, someone presents a problem, Margo is the facilitator, um, that person will then be asked maybe to pick someone from the group to represent themselves. I place them in the middle of the room, say a room like this. Uh, everyone's in the group sitting around the outside. And then maybe uh, based on a very brief conversation that's been had, say with Marco, either beforehand or in the group, there might be a sense that there's a need to have his father in, in the constellation. And maybe, maybe a brother, say. They just seem like those are the initial players. So they're placed in the middle of the room in different, whatever position he is drawn to place them. Um, and then that is the initial setup, which Margot then essentially diagnoses like with 
tea leaves or bones or something. <laughs> so that's the divination part. Uh, you know, the shaman can literally throw some bones on the ground or stones or feathers or whatever and from the way it all falls out there's often a real sense of what needs to of what the diagnosis is what the problem is and this would be true whether it's a health problem like say uh, rheumatoid arthritis or uh, or infertility or anything under the sun pretty much uh, you know the hangover from tra emotional trauma from childhood or as an adult or lingering fallout from a car accident that's say both physical and emotional I mean it could really be anything um, so that's the diagnosis that initial setup and then um, you know I, I just this my experience other people can contribute and you can certainly correct but my sense is that um, you will wait and see Margo is being guided by the field this, this is an important concept that this what I call no mind uh, Hellinger refers to as the knowing field so what we're doing in constellation work is putting our own thinking mind to some extent at, out of the picture and allowing this knowing field to reveal itself to us so the understanding is that something knows what's wrong and what needs to happen to fix it now that something is not a thing, it's not an entity, it's a, it's a knowing. Or you could call it emptiness, or no mind, or the mind of Christ, or the Holy Spirit, or... Um, energy? Energy, the Buddha mind. But it's uh, a field of energy that knows, that it knows everything there is to know, uh, and knows exactly what's wrong and exactly how to fix it. And our job is to tap into this knowing field and to be open to its revealing to us what needs to happen. So that's exactly what she does. She totally, I would say, surrenders to it. Like Hellinger talks about surrendering to the, to the field of energy uh, and allowing it to guide her. And everything in constellation work comes from that knowing field. So ideally, to do constellation work, you would need to have a real familiarity with the no mind, acting from no mind, acting from emptiness. Um, of course, very few therapists who do this know anything about that. But Hellinger had a deep appreciation of it, and he talks exactly that way. He uses his own language, but he says, you know, he's guided by the field, and he surrenders to the field, and the field operates and the way it operates, and he trusts it and goes wherever it says go. So those of you who participated in, in Margot's workshops know that that's what's going on. And you'll see her sit and just wait, sometimes for extended periods of time, um, until the field reveals what's next. So this is happening all the time in our lives. We just don't notice it. So there's this knowing field that is always showing you and me and everyone else in a moment-to-moment -moment way what's next. Of course, we don't know that and we don't see it. So a lot of what I think is important to learn to do, and I try to do in both psychotherapy and the group teachings, is help people see the uh, eruptions of the knowing field, which show up in your life spontaneously and then learn to trust that, surrender to it, act on it, and not second guess it. So that's exactly what you're asked to do as a participant in constellation work. To say, let's, so let's say you're placed in the middle of the room as Michael's brother. You don't know anything beyond that usually. You don't know if this man is alive or dead. You don't know if he was born dead. You don't know anything. So your job is to feel into this energy package of Michael's brother and allow this energy package to move you, to be you. So you're asked to stop being you, stop being uh, whoever, Debbie or Sylvia or whatever, 
and to be open to the movement and the indications of the field. And, uh, and a lot of this, as you notice, is nonverbal, and some of it might be verbal. But so that's what you have to do in order to adequately uh, represent this person. And as all of you who participate have seen, this, this happens. And it's rather strange, don't you think? It's kind of a hard, I mean, it's hard to describe if you haven't experienced it. But most of you have had some experience with it, so you know you're able to do this. And again, if you're, in, if you're participating in a constellation and you're able to accurately represent someone you know nothing about, you have succeeded at dropping your own self-identity and moving into this space of emptiness.